What's up, everyone? It's Chicks in the Office with Rian Fran, giving you that Friday energy on a Wednesday. Hopefully, everyone is having an amazing start to their week. We are now in the middle of the week. Francesca, how are you doing? Miss you. I'm great. I know. I miss you guys, but I, I really don't want to come back to New York. Oh, I, just... okay. So you don't miss us that much. <laughs> it's. I mean, it's just so much better here. It's just so much better. <laughs> I can only imagine. I'm sure it is. Lucky bitch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. I, I love New York between the months of September and May. Mm-hmm. And once it starts to get to summer, I would literally rather be anywhere else. But you love New York in like the middle of the frigid winter. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with New York in the winter. Like I don't I don't I mean, I don't love it, but mm. I don't like hate it where I feel like I need to flee. OK, New York in the summer. Like I feel like I need to flee. Right. Like when I come back on Sundays after like being at the beach or something and like I step out of Penn Station, I like want to cry. I'm like, oh, God, this place. <laughs> yeah, it's just like hot and humid with all the buildings just, and like, such. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> With all that was, architecture running around. Yeah, it's pave, hot, and stinky, and smelly. Yeah, the pavement as well. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah, glad you're enjoying your time there. I am very much so. Yes. Um, How are you guys doing? I'm I'm pretty dandy. I'm pretty damn dandy. I'm not gonna lie. Your hair looks fantastic. <sighs> Thanks. I got a blowout today. Um, it looks like I don't. I don't. Maybe it's just like the way. I'm looking at you, but it just looks so long and voluptuous. Oh my god! Thank you. Oh my god! I'm getting excited hearing those words. Uh, I mean, it's like kind of curled. I feel like if it was straight, it'd be like crazy long. I know. I haven't straight like actually straightened my hair in a long time, and I feel like it's way. And I just got it cut. I feel like it's way longer than I than I anticipate. Um, yeah, but, like um, you're you got much. a nice blowout, and you're it's you're at like nipple past nipple mm-hmm. length there. I am at nipple length with my hair. <laughs> um, yeah, probably a little bit further. There's layers. There's layers. Speaking of hair, I thought you were gonna say speaking of nipples. What's up with your no, hair? I just... <laughs> keep keep the subscribers coming. We're like three three k away. Oh yeah, keep subscribing. YouTube. We're so, close. we're so close to bleaching Noah's hair. August is gonna be a fun month for him and his blonde his blonde locks. So keep subscribing. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, yes. I'm very dandy. I'm going to see Drake tonight with my sister and boyfriend, fiance. <laughs> I don't For even... For a second, I was going to say husband, like like Nicole's. I was like... like <laughs> no. I was like, no, literally no one's a boyfriend anymore. Who's Nobody's boyfriend? a boyfriend. I'm still um trying to get like used to that rolling off the tongue. I actually enjoy... I enjoy saying it. Um, it is fun. It's fun. But like for people... Do you notice that for people that you know, right? Like... I don't even know how to describe it. It's like for people who already know you and then you're like, oh, my fiance, which I guess you're never really referring. You're always referring to by their name. But then yes. it's like, OK, relax. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're going to see Drake tonight. Very, very exciting. And 21 Savage, which I'm very excited about. I love 21 Savage. I just feel like nobody's posting anything about 21 Savage being at this concert. Like it's a Drake and 21 Savage concert. But it's more Drake. No, but it's Drake and then it's 21 Savage and then it's Drake and 21 Savage together. So I was going to say, what's the setup of the they of are the They are splitting the concert. The like it, it's Drake, 21, and then 21 and Drake together. I love 21 Savage. Uh, so I'm excited, but I have seen no videos of him. I've only seen videos of Drake. Do you know where so you're Drake sitting? technically goes first. Yeah. yeah, Drake goes first. Because I wonder if you're going to be close to where Drake walks through the crowd, you know? Yeah, I doubt it. I doubt it. Um, but we'll see. I'm excited. I'm very, very excited for that. And yeah, my birthday, I guess, is today. When, when this airs. That Happy birthday. Thanks. When, it's, when it airs. <laughs> I know. If, I feel like, so I guess last year we recorded on a birthday day. Yes. Right? Like that's because now we're just one year, one year later. So it makes sense. It'd be one day right. later. And then <laughs> when it comes out, then it wouldn't be my birthday anymore. But when this comes out, it will be my birthday. Yes. And I have a fun little birthday planned. I'm very excited. I'm going to see um, a wedding venue that I'm very excited about. And then I'm going to a beloved restaurant that I'm also very <laughs> excited about. And then. What a, what a tease. What a, te- what a just open ended tease. Well. I know you don't say it now you can say it after I'll say it after you'll probably see it in my story I just like don't want to like and then everyone's showing up for my birthday party (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. I I, I get it no um but whatever besides the point very excited and then 
um, going to the movies after. So originally we were going to see Barbie. I got tickets to see Barbie Wednesday night late, like 10 p.m. But I was like, yeah. that's fun. Dinner, hang, go to the movies later at night. Great little treat to end the night. And we had Oppenheimer booked for Thursday. I realized I booked Oppenheimer at the wrong theater on Thursday. So I was mm. like, fuck. And then I looked at the Wednesday options for Oppenheimer and realized that there's an earlier showing for Oppenheimer than there is Barbie and better seats. So I was mm. like, all right, let's do Oppenheimer Wednesday night and then I'm going to go see Barbie this weekend with some friends. So Barbie will be this weekend. Oppenheimer will be Wednesday night. Which Oppenheimer doesn't scream birthday film, but by that time, it's just a great. It, I heard it's a great film, so I'm just yeah, you know, ready to ready to watch. It's yeah, I mean, it's a that's a lengthy. It's a lengthy for, film, but it'll be at like nine o'clock, and it'll probably end at like twelve. Oh wait, no, it's yeah. if you yours is no, nine o'clock. It'll probably end at like one. Yeah, because I went last night and and I, the the showing was for eight thirty, and I got out at like midnight. Because obviously it starts like 30 minutes yeah, after it. Right. Yeah, you got to factor in all the previews. Listen, I could stay up. Yeah. I'll, I'll have a coffee <laughs> it's before birthday. it. It's your birthday. going to have a big night. Right, right. I don't want to just, you know what I mean? Like, why not go to the movies yeah. as well? Barbie is way more of a birthday movie. Um, but better seats, earlier time. Yeah. Going to go with that. Oh, did you just go see Oppenheimer? Yeah, last night I saw it. I thought it was really good. But I was saying to Rhea that... Uh, I didn't realize, but I booked a theater that I didn't realize until I was there that has closed captions on the screen, which I really am not a fan of. Like I know people yeah. on Netflix or whatever. I just it distracts me so much. I ended up just reading everything, so I want to see it again without the caption, mm. so I can like fully appreciate the visuals. But yeah, it was an amazing film, obviously. Yeah. I feel that I am I would not enjoy subtitles at the movie theater, but I am a huge subtitles girl at home. Like when I'm watching TV at night, subtitles. Sometimes like it's nice to put the volume low and then if you pay attention, you can like go to sleep. You know, it's kind of like reading a book before bed, but you're just reading your TV. <laughs> <laughs> the seats are nice. Though. Very very true. I feel it, I feel the exact same way. Um, what are you seeing it in IMAX Rhea? No, just regular. I've talked regular. to some people here that they were like, it doesn't matter. Yeah, honestly, mine was like regular, but it almost felt, I'm like, is this regular? Because mm. it seemed huge. Yeah, I was talking to Robbie Fox about it, and he was like, it literally doesn't matter. Like The sound is one. really good. Yeah, I'm also not one to be like, I need to see this in IMAX. Like, yeah, yeah. Rhea's like, only want... 70 millimeter. <laughs> yeah. I just want to watch the movie. I'm excited about it. I'm excited for Barbie, too. I'm excited for both of them. But yeah, it, it'll be a fun It is funny because Josh... So it's my, sorry, it's my golden birthday. I didn't know that, but Ro I was talking to Robbie in the office and, you know, when you, tur you turn an age on the same day that it's your birthday. So my birthday is July 26 and I am so turning 26 true. on July 26. So it's my, go it's my golden birthday and I didn't know that was a thing. And now I'm like, wow, I'm pretty excited. I, for I, I, I knew that was a thing, but I forgot like the term for it. That is so, that is exciting. Yeah. So I got these shoes. I think I talked about, about it when we first came back. I bought these, you know, I splurged. I don't really buy designer items. I mean, they're very expensive, obviously. Yeah. Uh, you know, not, I'm not frequenting the designer item. But yeah. when we were in St. Bart's, we went to the Louis Vuitton store and it's cheaper there. So obviously I felt like I had to buy something and I bought these shoes that are to die for. <laughs> and I've been holding them hostage because I was like, where the hell? They're so nice. I'm like, where the hell would I wear these? I'm going to wear them on my birthday. You wear them to the movie theater? No, no. I'm going home no. to change before the movie. Oh, my God. Don't okay. be crazy. I'll be a lunatic. No, no. There's time in between dinner okay. and the movie. There's enough time in between to go home and change into comfy clothes. I will not go to the movies unless I'm in comfortable clothes. The people dressing up for the movies, good for you, fun for you, won't be me. I need a sweatshirt. I need sweatpants. Well, there's no dressing up for Oppenheimer. <laughs> right. But I need sweatshirt, sweatpants, basically slippers on my feet. Like, I'm a comfy movie gal. So yeah, I'll yeah. be going home to change. But no, I'm going to wear the shoes. I'm so excited about them. I, I've been like, where am I going to wear these to? I'm going to wear them tomorrow. Why not? 
I, as you should. Sounds like the perfect time to wear them. I mean, you're yeah. not going to wear a pink mini dress to go see Barbie this weekend. <laughs> Probably not. I, I, I appreciate people who can do that and get really into things and are really enthusiastic and excited. Um, living life to the fullest, as I would yeah. say. But Barbie has really caused quite a stir. It has. I like to maximize comf- comfiness, so I'm, that's why I go to the movies and that. But yeah, Barbie as has caused quite a stir and... I would love to know your take on it. Neither of us have seen it, right? We're both yeah. excited to see Barbie. Who, I mean, who doesn't love Barbie if you're, you know, if you grew up the time we did or really any time. I was saying earlier that I was, I did love Barbie and I had, you know, all Barbie different like accessories and stuff like that. But I also loved Bratz a lot. Like I feel like Bratz really took off for people my age. Um, so I really loved Bratz. But of course I loved Barbie as well. But my take on this whole outrage with the Barbie movie is like it's just a movie you know what I mean like yeah you can love it you could not like it I think people getting offended by the movie are absurd like Who's getting yeah. offended there apparently there are people out there getting offended I actually have not seen that outrage as much as people are talking about the outrage you know what I yeah. mean? Like sometimes you see a lot of people talking about the outrage, but you don't see the outrage itself. That's kind of what I've been seeing. Um, and I think that's absurd if you are like offended by the Barbie movie. I think that's crazy. But I think it's okay to not love a movie. And I think it's okay to love it. You know what I mean? That's my yeah. that's kind of my stance on it. Like you don't need to be obsessed with the Barbie movie, but also if you're obsessed with the Barbie movie, that's great and exciting. Yeah, totally. I, and it's like, I, anybody who says they sometimes I I sometimes I do feel like and look up, you know I haven't seen it yet maybe I'm gonna love it and then be mad at all the people who don't like it but mm. but um when when you love something you have to like really learn how to not take personal offense when someone you know doesn't like the same thing mm-hmm. as much like it's really it's not a hit on your own character. Like, it's not someone saying they don't like you. It's just, hey, you know, they didn't love it like you loved it. And you can always love something, cherish it, keep it whole. But you just because somebody in your life, like, doesn't really like it, it, it doesn't, don't, like, don't let that stir inside of you and you get upset about it or you, like, get almost mad at the person for, for not liking it. It's just... That's that's their that's their taste. That's how they feel about it. And they'll, you'll be able to find plenty of people that you can talk to that will love it. And you can talk about it with those people and still be happy about it. But like, I mean, there's just and it's not even doesn't even matter with the Barbie movie. Like there's other things that I have just loved in my life that I have people and they're like, yeah, I liked it. Yeah. It's like, I mean, yeah, okay, I'm not going to like lecture you on all the reasons why it's amazing. Like, I feel like it's amazing. In, and maybe you didn't. And that's okay. <laughs> Friend, that's a great way to look at things. It's just an outlook on life. I feel like literally with anything, that's kind of the correct take to have. Where yeah. it's like you, you said it perfectly. I can't say it any better. It's like you don't need to be personally offended that somebody didn't like something that you like. It has nothing to do with you. You didn't make it. So, yeah. what, so what does it matter? And I, and I also think that is just life. Like some people love things and some people hate them. Not everybody in the world is going to love the same exact thing. People have different tastes. They have different interests. Do I expect? Kevin Clancy and Feidelberg to be obsessed with the Barbie movie? No. I actually think it would be quite weird if they were obsessed with the Barbie movie, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, I would be like, why do these two guys love the Barbie movie that much? <laughs> like, right. that's, uh, it, it, to me, it just makes sense. Like, I don't know. I just think if you, and also, if you're a guy out there and you did love the Barbie movie, I'm not calling you weird. That was more of a joke. But yeah. it's just, it is what it is. I don't think, I think people are getting too riled up about what people like and don't like. And at the end of the day, it's a movie. It's supposed to be fun. And I think, you know, I think maybe we got to talk to our girl, Kelly Keeks, and say, hey, Kelly, it's all right. You know, people are going to hate it. They're going to say, oh, it stinks. People are going to love it. They're going to say, oh, my God, it's amazing. It's the best thing ever. And then there's normally a majority because like anything, the people that are more in the middle are the less vocal. The ones that are at the ends are the extreme voices Mm -hmm. and the ones that yell the loudest. Yeah, there's plenty of people like, you know, the lights, camera, Barcelona guys put up their Barbie reviews, too. And it was like fun movie, kind of exactly what I expected. (laughs) Enjoyed it. 
like it, it can it, you know? it can be as simple as that like i was talking to um Robbie Fox about it. I mentioned him a few times, but he went to go see both movies, and he was like, "Yeah, I liked it. It was fun. It was cute. You know, that yeah. that's really it." And I right, s- and you're gonna always have people. I understand. My my sister saw it. She texted me. She was like, "That was the." She's like, "I cried. I loved it. It was amazing. Like, you know, she loved every single moment mm-hmm. in the movie. It seemed, which is also totally yeah. fair, right?" And I saw uh, Grace O'Malley yes. and Brie talked about it on their on uh, Plan Brie. And Grace said she didn't like the movie. And then she posted an Instagram story today where people were calling her uh, misogynistic because she didn't like the movie. Yeah. And I'm like, that we just don't have to go that, you know what I mean? We just don't have to go that far. Like if yeah. if Grace didn't love the movie, she didn't love the movie, you yeah. know? It's just, I know. <sighs> Fran, why can't people be more like us? <laughs> God, that's what I'm saying. No, are you listening to that at least? I heard that. Okay, good. That was that was a joke. Um, but I feel like what what you were saying in the beginning of that conversation was pretty pretty spot on. Hit the nail yeah. on the head with that one. Um, all right, let's get into the topics for today. We are going to be talking about Molly May and Tommy Fury are engaged. A huge miss by us not talking about that on Monday. I don't know how we missed that, but I'm I'm glad we waited because now they've posted like a lot more. So yeah, there's we more have details. more to talk about. Ariana Grande and Ethan Slater relationship seems a bit messy with the ex-wife of Ethan Slater. Uh, interesting development going on over there. Aesop Rocky performed a new song at Rolling Loud, which people seem to think it's a diss about Travis Scott or maybe even Drake. And Pete Davidson, his record will continue to be clean. But he's got to do some community service after that little car crash into the house. We're also going to add cutting stems into this episode if you want to listen to a little Bachelorette recap. Unfortunately, Trent wasn't available for cutting stems or to do a Bachelorette recap with us. So we kind of just... I literally no response. I I asked him if he had any time. (laughs) And he didn't. So he's going to... And I didn't get an answer. He's going to have to put some more money in that jar. But uh, we're going to add cutting stems to this. And we have a great interview with Maura Higgins from Love Island UK now on Love Island USA in Fiji. She is a new ambassador for Love Island USA. So let's get into it starting off the topics. Right now is wedding planning season for both of us and I'm sure a ton of listeners out there as well. And if you've been to other weddings or other people in your life are planning weddings that you then you know that Zola is the place to be when you're getting married. It's not just about the big day. It's about all the days along the way. And Zola is here for all of them. If you've been to a wedding recently, like I said, then you definitely know Zola is the place to use. You've made, you've maybe even got one of their beautiful invites on your fridge right now, or you've bought a gift off someone's registry and thought, hmm, maybe I'll get that for myself as well. When you're planning a wedding, you suddenly realize what else Zola has. It's where you'll find your venue and all your wedding vendors. It's where you'll create your free wedding website so guests can RSVP and buy you those amazing gifts. But there's also so much more, like a budget tracker, a tool to grab all of your guest addresses, which I'm finding to be very, very important. Checklists to keep you focused as well, which I also think is important. There's a lot that goes into wedding planning and a checklist, a budget tracker, tool for guest addresses are all essential. You can also turn to Team Z, Zola's free expert advisors to answer any questions you may have along the way or the Zola community full of other engaged couples who know what you're going through. So start planning at Zola.com. That's Z-O-L-A.com. All right, let's get into the topics. Let's start off with Molly May and Tommy Fury. Huge congratulations to these two. What a beautiful engagement announcement. What a beautiful video. We saw the whole thing go down. Their baby was there. Uh, Molly May just released details about how it went down. There were, uh, she thought they were going to an event together. There were fake invites. There were fake emails. Uh, It was a whole surprise for her. And I loved every second of it, thought it was beautiful. Some people may have thought that they were engaged or married already because they did have a baby, but that is not the case. They are now engaged and so cute. I'm so happy for them. So happy for them. I feel like she just like everything she shared was just so sweet. And it really seemed like Tommy considered everything, you know, she said flew out her her glam team, the videographer, the whole thing. They had the, artists playing 
the song that they've used like for a bunch of their announcements slash during their end scene in Love Island during their, you know, like finale moments, they played this song that she is like always love now. They played it during the gender reveal. Now they have it in the engagement. It's just so, so sweet. I think the artist actually like performed. It was just absolutely amazing. Phenomenal proposal absolutely cry their baby is so freaking cute too so oh, cute. just like little I, squish there's something about like a couple's baby being involved in all of their steps of getting married that i think is really sweet you know like yeah have you ever seen couples where they get married and their their baby's their flower girl i'm like yeah. that that is so adorable to have that and you know joel and b got married over the weekend um and his son is like right behind mm-hmm. right behind them in between the picture of them coming out of the church it's just so cute it, they're very 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 sweet but and, and molly also posted that clip of where on her season she was like just call me molly fury like i as a joke but now obviously it's so real molly fury is such a sick name imagine having such a sick name like that <laughs> like such a cool name oh just rolls but- off the tongue I know, you are bound I know. to be famous with certain names. I know. I, I I'm absolutely thrilled. Yeah, I'm for, so happy for, for them. them. Maybe one of the biggest good for them's we've we we could have. Truly, I, I I like. I don't know. I have nothing else to say, but I'm I'm happy for them. I think that they are one of the most, if not the most loved couple of Love Island of all time, and they deserve it. Like yeah. it, to look back on that season of Love Island, by the way, and think that people thought that Molly May wasn't genuine and she wasn't in love with Tommy, I think is so absurd because I feel like you felt it from the beginning with them too. And so I know, and everyone everyone knocks them for their age. They were like, mm-hmm. Oh, they're so young, they're so young. Well, you know, they've they've made it this far and by, holy, I mean, she you know me, I'm zooming in. She's got a a hell of an engagement ring yeah, as well. Beautiful. Wouldn't be surprised nothing but the best for Molly May, of obviously. Of course, it's beautiful. I'm so happy yeah. for them. That's a good for them. Yeah. Uh moving on to a maybe not so good for them is Ariana Grande and Ethan Slater, which by the way, and now take this as you will, Last week when we were talking about Ariana Grande and Ethan Slater, we kind of just, we were in the middle of recording when that news broke. And so we were like, all right, let's just get to this fast. Not fast, yeah. but we, let, let's well, no, throw this we in. Just, oh, we really had the bare minimum. We had we, the headline. We had we just had the headline. And I didn't even see what he looked like, like before the, then, then we stopped recording. It was after, and I was looking at all these pictures and I was like, what is going on? And- I'm not saying anything besides the fact that he is SpongeBob. Like, uh, it makes 100% sense why he played SpongeBob on Broadway. He's SpongeBob. He, there's been so many TikToks. He does, he looks very much like Frankie Grande. <laughs> yeah. Like, they really I think have that's a lot what was of similarities. More shocking. It was, it was like, wait, this guy who, like, like you said, looks like Frankie Grande? Like, it's just, it was just out of nowhere, it felt like. Yeah. And and apparently it also felt out of nowhere for his wife, who I guess had learned about this relationship a couple of days before the news broke. Very recent. All I all I have been seeing is a bunch of TikToks, videos, Twitter videos, compilations of Ariana Grande's dating history, and you know I. I don't know if she's really a girl's girl, you know? Yeah, you know, the more they compile, it, it's not looking great for her because, so Pete David, well, Big Sean, apparently. I have a video was, that goes all the yeah. way back from even earlier than that. Right. It um, it goes back pretty far, but I think like the main ones people were talking about was Big Sean, Pete Davidson, Dalton even. Um, yeah, I could go through some of them. 2013, Jay Brooks, said that uh accused her of cheating with Nathan, Nathan Sykes then there's also rumors that Mac Miller had cheated on his girlfriend with Ariana around that same time 2016 Naya Rivera revealed in her book that Big Sean allegedly cheated on her in 2014 with Ariana when she walked into her house and Ariana was there um there in 2018 Mac Miller's ex-girlfriend revealed on her Instagram story or on her, oh, not her, on her Tumblr blog that Mac had cheated on her again with Ariana in 2016. 2018, of course, we know that Cassie David 
She claimed that she had found out about this like on the internet. Um, there are rumors that Ariana cheated on Mac with Pete Davidson while Pete was also in a relationship with Cassie David. Um, that and then Cassie claimed that she found out about this relationship on Instagram. And that, you know, in, in 2020 is when she said that. And she then met Dalton, who I guess also maybe was seeing somebody. And then there was maybe another moment with Big Sean where they had maybe had a little reunion type situation while he was also with somebody else in 2019. Then 2020, of course, is when the beginning of 2020 is when she met Dalton and um, Dalton's ex-girlfriend posted on her Instagram story a me a, like a picture that said, when you see your ex with the person they told you not to worry about. Mm. Um, and now here we are in July of 2023, where it was announced that Ariana and Dalton are getting a divorce and that Ethan Slater and his wife are separating. And that all happened in the one week. And now we have just seen multiple stories um about his wife Lily not knowing or not n- being told about this but right before the story mm-hmm. broke i mean ariana grande literally wrote a song called break up with your girlfriend on board so yeah. you know people are acting surprised but she wrote right. it in a song you know yeah, and i do remember when people point. when that song was released in the album people were like the like Ariana Grande's music is just great, so everyone was like, mm, "Loving the song," but then everyone was like, "Wait a second, Ariana, this isn't a great message. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't put that out there." Yeah, so yeah, really. and and I also think like when it comes down to it, there's a difference between like rumors and people speculating about something, and then the people straight up coming out and being like, "Yeah, this happened." Yeah, and you know, I think everyone historically has kind of given her the benefit of the doubt and now it's just like it just keeps like the right. rumors just keep circulating where it's like okay you know you there's not this many rumors about you uh cheating unless something happened at least one time right especially because this is a wife you know what yeah. i mean like of course girlfriend serious but when you bring like a, a whole marriage into it and a divorce, it's like people are going to dig even deeper right. into the situation. And, uh, and maybe maybe there wasn't really any maybe there wasn't overlap in this scenario, but it does seem like this man has divorced his wife to be with Ariana Grande. Right. Exactly. Like there could have been not overlap, but he could have maybe developed a crush on Ariana Grande and was like, all right, I'm now going to divorce my wife yeah. to be with Ariana Grande, which but I'm thinking there, I'm thinking there was a yeah, yeah, I will say they right. been filming this movie for a long time. <laughs> right. They have been deep into wicked, which they I have been filming this movie for a long time. I will say if there was no no overlap and he was like, I'm developing this crush. I need to get a divorce. That's probably what you should do. Right. Like right. if you are getting feelings for somebody else, you should probably end whatever relationship you're in. Right. But you, you can't overlap. No, no. You can't you can't do the overlap, Ethan. Yeah, I you know, I don't know if I really just never paid that close attention to like all the in-between stuff. And then my TikTok was just filled with it, like all this mm. past it's not she looking did. great for Ariana. And I was like, damn, girl, I did not re- I kind of forgot about all it's this. It's just stuff. not it is not looking good for Ariana. Like at all. Um, oh, but I think so. it's like Ariana Grande is one of those people though, right? Because you look at all these things and you're like, ooh really not good yeah there's too I many did. there's too many instances here to like back her up yeah and then you're just like but man her music's great she's gonna be great and wicked and that's how they get away with these things because you're like we're still gonna watch wicked i know i know i i um i saw a tiktok of this girl maybe she, she shouldn't be, like, be a role model but we're still gonna watch yeah. wicked don't don't follow her relationship no. mood. Um, but she, this girl, this girl on TikTok, she must be like a, a musical theater person, but she went viral, was cracking me up because she was just like, you know how hard it is to find a, like a, a, a straight man who can, who who's in musicals with you? Like, she's like, I don't, she's like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do, she's like, I don't condone what she did, but I understand it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't understand this one. I no, do I, not understand yeah. this one at all. So that's um. <laughs> what What were you gonna say, Noah? No, no, nothing. Nothing. What were you gonna say? I was just gonna make a joke about him. Well, now the joke's gonna fall Crickets. flat. Crickets. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Right. We'll no, no, I just didn't want to. I just don't want to make a joke about someone's looks. I, I just right. Didn't no, make a joke I think about I think looks. that's respectful. Clearly, he's a very talented guy. He got nominated is, for a Tony for that. He is very talented. Clearly, Ariana Grande are, is just not attracted to conventionally attractive men. You know what I'm saying? F- well, you know, she. I would. You know how on Love Island, everyone like the people come in and they're like, I, I don't have a type. Like I, I like personality, and you're always like, okay, like what's really your type? I actually feel like Ariana Grande does fall into the category of mm-hmm. personality, like yep. p- people's vibes. Cause it's been, it, the, the people have are all, all across the board. Um, and that is not true, Noah, because I would say big Sean is very conventionally. Mm-hmm. handsome. <laughs> big yeah. That's like the guy. one outlier. I mean, yeah. I, Dalton, Dalton was uh, attractive. I feel like otherwise think, like, it's like kind of like skinny white guys with tattoos. I mean, does oh. this guy have tattoos? No, not this guy, but like Mac, <laughs> yeah. Dalton, Pete, like those are all skinny guys. With no, I, Dal- I, Dalton is a tattoo guy? I think he does. I, he is. I think Fran's more on, like, I think she just likes a vibe. It's a great sentiment behind the decisions of why, you know, she is falling for these guys. If she is basing it off personality, she just needs to find ones that aren't uh, in relationships. Yes, non-married <laughs> guys. Yeah. Would be great for her. That would be, you know, <laughs> you pick whoever you want based on personality. Just, you know, make sure their personality yeah. isn't married. Right. Make sure maybe they're single. That would be great. The, the, Sponge, the voice actor for SpongeBob now, his wife, or I don't know, previously, or just the voice actor for SpongeBob, his wife, like, came out and made a joke of, like, my my husband is is not dating Ariana Grande. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. I did see that. When I first saw it, though, I was like, wait. His wife's now saying they're not dating. Like I was very confused, and then I realized that it was the SpongeBob guy. Yes, it was this SpongeBob voice actor. Um, but I think Ariana Grande's team is working overtime on like trying to make this seem like it wasn't like a big deal. Right. Like, but, I mean, because his amicable wife, splits on all accounts. I will say that his wife isn't being like, "Yeah, he cheated on me with Ariana Grande." Like, no, she isn't saying that. But she is saying like, mm, "This is interesting." Anyways, let's just get that fucking wicked movie done. How about it? All right, yeah. kids. Um, all right, moving on. I guess we could talk about Pete Davidson real quick because it just feels on theme. Pete Davidson's record is clean from that car crash where he crashed into another person's home, but he does have to complete community service. He has to attend driving classes, and I think he has to go to a morgue. I think that's the word to see dead bodies. Yeah. Of people who died in in fatal car crashes. What? Jesus, is that is that like a thing that they do now? I'm not. Pete 100- Davidson. I mean, best case scenario for Pete Davidson here. Yeah, he has to fifty hours of community service. He has to complete twelve hours of traffic school. And where did I see the thing about a more? Oh no! Yeah, he he has to. Perform work at the medical examiner's office or a hospital. Huh. Yeah, that's that's dark. It doesn't really give out more information than that. It yeah. just says that'll uh, that'll scare prosecu- you. Prosecutors said the program requires Davidson to perform work at the medical examiner's office or a hospital or the New York equivalent. Plus attend 12 hours of traffic school, like you said, and then 30 hours of community service um, that also may be performed in New York, pay restitution and obey all laws. Yeah, that um, I think that'll scare you into hopefully. Yeah, it's an 18 month diversion program. Well, well instead, he will in he will instead enter the diversion program in a deal that was advanced to the court last Wednesday by the DA's office. So I guess that's, I guess that's the, the program you agree to, you agree to do all these things and, and it case closed. Like you said, I think that's best case scenario where like, you know, his record will be clean. And I think he's getting away with this because he is Pete Davidson and, you know, he still has to do the community service and, and whatnot, but 
you yeah. know, it's fairly serious what happened. He literally crashed his car into another person's home. Yeah, yeah, so uh, definitely. Not great. I just saw a headline. I haven't clicked the article yet, but as we're recording, I see Kim Zolziak and Croy Bierman's reconciliation is at risk. Every day is an uphill battle. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. Maybe stop putting out what your relationship status is until you find out what you two are doing. Because every yeah. week it's they're getting divorced. They're not getting divorced. It's tumultuous. It's an uphill battle, apparently. That's yeah. the line I'm reading right now. There's simply too much bad blood and hatred towards each other, the insider tells us. There's a lot of shit talking and it's hard to see how this will be resolved amicably. They are also not seeking counseling. They are still living together, but every day is an uphill battle. Those close to them think the reconciliation will be short-lived. Yeah, that doesn't sound good. No, it sounds like a lot of fighting at the house and no no counseling seeking. Just seems like them at each other's throats every day. Yeah, that so, really does not sound good. Yeah. All right, last topic. ASAP Rocky performed a new song at Rolling Loud, and some of the lyrics included, first you stole my flow, so then I stole your bitch. And then he, he wrote... And then he said, and then you stole my style. I need at least like 10%. Yes. Yeah, so people were speculating about uh, what this was about, who this was about. And some were saying Travis Scott. Some were saying Drake. I I don't see the Drake compare. I think the people people were saying Drake because of Rihanna. Drake right. and ASAP Rocky, their rapping style, their music is so different that I just can't see ASAP Rocky being like Drake stole my flow. First of all, Drake was around like before ASAP Rocky, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So I don't Travis think Travis Scott I, would make more sense. Travis Scott, I think, would make more sense. But then I was like, did Travis Scott date Rihanna? And according to the internet, they did. Apparently, yes, in like 2015. Yeah, apparently they did. I don't recall or that they did at bitch all. My, bitch for my money. Yeah, but maybe. What if it was another girl? I don't know if ASAP Rocky would, would be would rapping. ASAP Rocky call like I mean I don't know, but he, would he say like his wife now Rihanna or bitch? Like would he say that in the song? I think he'd be like, it's my bitch. I think Rihanna would be cool with that. I, in yeah. my opinion, I don't think Rihanna would care about that. And maybe maybe this and this is like sometimes it's so I don't know why I just feel this way more with rap than like other lyrics because obviously other lyrics like rhyme, but rap feels to rhyme more. That I'm just like, maybe maybe he just wanted to rhyme, you know? He's just <laughs> Friend, that's what I was saying before. I was saying that. I was like, maybe he was literally just rapping and it just sounded like a good line. And so he said, I'll <laughs> use this. And it has really nothing to do with anybody. I don't know if he would be rapping about stealing other bitches when he is with Rihanna. Like, I don't know how cool that would be. Yeah. To be like, yeah, I stole your bitch. And now he's bragging about another girl. Um, But, but I pe also... People have definitely been like, Travis Scott kind of stole ASAP Rocky's whole like image and he's talked about I, it before. Look, I, I, can, I can get, I understand that like sentiment, mm -hmm. like especially the, you know, the style line. Like I, mm -hmm. I see that. Yeah. I think it would probably be more, tra I don't think Drake has anything to do with this. I think it's. No, like, no, really no. I, tra I think Travis would make the most sense. Also, I feel like Travis, like not that he's been completely like excommunicated he hasn't at all and he is working still of course but feel like it is much more uh acceptable slash like nor normalized now to kind of like shit on travis scott yeah i don't think you're going after drake right now and also drake and asap rocky used to work together a lot like i don't think he'd be like you yeah. stole my flow when he drake had asap rocky open up for him in concert years ago yeah. So I don't think it's that. But interesting. Hey, Travis. Uh, whenever ASAP Rocky releases new music, it makes me happy. So I'm happy about that either way. I don't care who he's rapping about at all, honestly. Some like you said, sometimes I literally think he rappers looks so cool. Like his outfit in when, that performance. He's when he performs, he looks very cool. Like <laughs> ASAP like Rocky is very like cool. No, his <laughs> head in like he's he has great fashion sense too. He knows, he, he's the like head he, of Pac Sun. He, he knows what he's doing. ASAP Rocky. I mean, let's just look at Blunt Thotty as an example. Does Rhea drive a car with suicide doors? Right, exactly. No. Exactly. But it sounded good in the rap. <laughs> yeah. Titties in my face. Do I have titties in my face often? <laughs> Never really. I don't know. I don't know so what you do in your time. <laughs> so Never really, unless they're mine. <laughs> right, unless they're friends. I think friends might be the only titties I've ever had in my face. <laughs> so You've been to strip clubs? I have been to strip clubs, but I've never gotten um, a lap dance. So... 
no titties my face there either yeah sometimes you just gotta do it for the do it for the lyrics i think a lot of rapping has to, like there are they talk about like killing each other well some of, <laughs> well, some of them do well that's what i'm saying yeah. some of them 50 yeah. cents not lying yeah 50, but some of them are lying some of them oh yeah like i think cardi b even spoke about it that she would write all these raps about all the cars and stuff she has that she did not have but now also, if you're in trouble, like if you look at Young Thug, like now you're kind of like, oh, it's all made up. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's not oh real. my God, no! It was. It's, I'm just rapping. <laughs> yeah. It's what I wish my life was. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Well, that wraps up the topics, and we'll get to the interview. All right. We have a little cutting stems to listen to. We were talking about the end of Sean, all these great things, which means. It's also time to chill because we've got our Coors Light ready to go. You guys know Coors Light is my drink of choice. You know, watching The Bachelorette, it's a couple hours. You can sit back, relax, chill. And everyone now, you know, you're dreaming. I'm I'm up here. I'm dreaming about it. Sitting at the beach thinking about the day when everyone can get to retire and enjoy all the freedoms that come with it. But who says you have to wait decades for that time to sit back, relax, and chill? You can have your Coors Light now and enjoy that time to chill. The mountains on the bottles and cans even turn blue when your beer is cold, so you know when it's time to chill. Like this one right here is ready to go. So it's perfect for all your summer plans or lack thereof. No judgment here. So whether you're just laying low and relaxing or going out and having some fun, do it with a Coors Light this summer, chill like you're retired with Coors Light. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash chicks and always celebrate responsibly from Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Cutting Stems, the Bachelorette's after show. We have Rio, we have Kelly, we have myself, Fran. No Trent, sadly, who is quite literally the star of the show, and he could not be more unavailable. We don't have him to talk with at all. Everyone's probably so excited. They just watched Trent's big moments, and they're hoping to hear his thoughts. Uh, He's out here. (laughs) That is, it's, it's truly so upsetting because it's like the one part of the show I want to talk about with Trent and we can't talk about it. Everyone's like, oh my God, Trent. And yet we don't have him, but he did, he did release a statement regarding his appearance on the show and his official statement was, I was ready. So take that as you will, whatever that means to you. He was ready. He was ready to go. You know, it's sad because we all watched the episode. We all saw what happened. I was ready to go nuclear nuclear on, on Sean. Like oh, I yeah. was re- like, if Sean was the reason that that poll didn't happen, I was ready to just lay into him. Like I was like, Oh my God, if this guy sends himself home and like that, his luggage doesn't get pulled because he's sending himself home, like something like that, I was going to freak out. But at the end of the day, it was Charity's decision, um, and you know I, I I respect Charity. I think she's been a great bachelorette, so I can't be that upset at Charity. Agreed. I think I think Charity has been a great bachelorette as well, but I was kind of pissed at her in this moment just because we would have gotten Trent pulling Sean's luggage because at the end of the day she didn't feel the connection with Sean and sent him home, but yet no luggage pull. So yeah. I was a little pissed at Charity. Although mm-hmm. she's been great, so I'm not going to hold it against her. And we ended up getting a hilarious scene from Trent. So. Yeah, agreed. And I do think uh, I know we'll we'll get into it in a minute, but obviously Sean uh, was and Tanner were on a two on one date, something that we haven't seen in a while. I feel two on one dates are are one of my personal favorites because there's always fireworks. There's always somebody's mad, somebody's feeling left out, whatever. And I think though that uh, because Charity is. It, she really has her head on straight and she's really thinking a lot about this. She's not trying to hurt people's feelings. She's trying to find love without leaving too much destruction in her, in her path. And uh, I think it was mature of her to not pitch them against each other in that moment, because whenever we do have the two on ones, it's very much like him versus him or her versus her. You know what I mean? And I think that uh, 
as fun as it is from a dramatic standpoint, I think, you know, at the end of the day, she she looks good. She comes out of this looking good, looking mature, whatever. So yeah, for selfish reasons, I wanted to see fireworks. I wanted to see drama, but we got the, we went the mature route. And she definitely did. She's handled everything with a lot of maturity, honestly, but we can start um, from the beginning and talk about these dates. They're in New Orleans, having a fun time. Joey gets... The first one-on-one date, which, of course, is a hot topic because he's already had one. So now we're already starting to repeat when multiple people haven't had one-on-ones at all, which says a lot about where Charity's head is at. Like, totally. last week we were talking with Joe and Serena, and they were both kind of like, it's been obvious who her top guys have been from the beginning. Like, she's not that great at hiding it. I think we could all kind of tell the direction she was going in. So she takes Joey on another date, and I really have no commentary besides this was start to finish a perfect date like perfect they joey knocked it out of the park they had fun they laughed and then when they sat down at dinner it was serious enough where i felt like joey really was open to that conversation it's a very serious important conversation for charity and he just he nailed it I think he t- completely nailed it. I he, think he's really like just a sincere guy. Like I can really f- mm-hmm. feel that he was being genuine. You know, that is not an easy conversation for charity to have, obviously. And I think that he was all ears and he's open to going through that with charity and learning and just just being a genuine guy. Like throughout yeah. the entire date, I almost started getting nervous because I was like, oh my God, he's so nice. I'm afraid Charity doesn't like him as much as he likes her. But I do think after watching the end of the date, I think that Charity was so blown away by how great of a guy Joey is Mm -hmm. that sometimes it's hard for her to even like process it because I don't think she's being used to being treated the way that Joey has been treating her, which I think is really nice. I'm a Joey fan. Like I I, I think he just seems like a great guy. I could not agree more with that. I think that first of all, he's so cute. Like I like the whole time I was like, Joey is just what an adorable angel. Like the whole time, (laughs) apart from like his behavior, he just like looks amazing. But, but yeah, whenever, um, whenever these conversations have to come up, I feel like it happens sometimes doesn't matter who the lead is, but every once in a while a race conversation comes up and it's, you kind of hold your breath a little bit when we're watching these shows, especially, you know, the bachelor ABC, the history behind it, whatever. I think that, they always need to happen and how people respond to them is important. And like you guys said, Joey knocked out of the park. I think the, right. He's genuine, all this stuff, but Rhea, something you said I thought stuck out was uh, that he's just listening and willing to learn. And I think that in those conversations, in that situation, all you can say is that like, I, I don't know exactly what you're talking about, but I'm willing to learn. I'm here to, you know, go with it through you. I'm not afraid of it. And I think that that is probably the only way that you can really respond to that. And uh, he had his head on, right that so i appreciate him for that yeah i agree he definitely obviously succeeded and um i think charity really felt the love from him and he talked about you know taking that next step and falling in love with her and he got a rose so they are going to his hometown which is very exciting and then the two-on-one which kelly like you said could not have been happier to bring the two on one back. It's been a while. Kind of forgot about it. Like when this happened, I was like, ooh, I forgot about two on. Honestly, perfect candidate. I don't know if producers cash on just with this in mind, being like, you know what? This is our guy for to bring back the two on one. Yep. And mm-hmm. he went on the two on with Tanner, which also was perfect because Tanner is just like a solid brick wall. You know, he's yeah. not being knocked over. I, he doesn't care how annoying Sean gets. Like he's like trusting himself and his relationship with charity. And he's just kind of like, Hey, what can you do? It's a two on one. <laughs> and Sean's like, you know, was throwing a fit about it a little bit. And um, I will say that like the date went very well. They went on just a, a trip through the bayou. They were checking out all the, the gators. Um, they had a, you know, a character, and a half with the with Ugh. the captain who was who was cracking me up. I mean, when he at the end when he was like, I mean, if it doesn't work out with any of them, like I'm available. <laughs> <laughs> I love that too. He was that, 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 that made me laugh. But I thought it was pretty like, I mean, obviously the drama came later, but they both handled themselves pretty well while 
actually being on the date. Yeah, I was excited for like a Sean meltdown moment because whenever we would hear him talking alone, it was headed in that direction. Actually on the date, I felt like Charity's connection with Sean was stronger than Tanner. So I was kind of surprised by the result of the end of the episode because I didn't, I, the way that it was edited seemed like Sean was getting all the attention and Tanner was kind of just like cool, sitting back, whatever. Um, but yeah, like you said, it was handled well during the date. I just love the fact that Sean was getting riled up like behind the scenes. I think yeah. too, Tanner, Tanner said something along the lines of like, Sean really wants to like win this date. And I think that too, that happens always with the two on one. It's like, yes, he wants charity's attention. Yes. He wants her love, whatever. But when we do this thing where there are these two guys fighting for the same girl, that like competitiveness comes out and Sean, you can't argue. Sean is good at that. Sean played it well. He's charismatic. He ha- he held her attention. He was very flirty. Even our even our guy driving the boat said that she he yeah. felt that she had more of a connection with him because I think he really went out of his way to make sure that he was the star of the show. He wanted to win. And even the part where, which I loved, I texted in the group where uh, Charity's kind of off to the side saying her own thing. And Sean comes over to like say goodbye and is like making out with her on camera, like totally takes her focus away from what she's up to. And then she went off on another tangent being like, he's just so sweet. Like that was so nice of him to come over here and like say goodbye to me. But in reality, in my head, I'm like, okay, well, he came over here because he knows what's happening. And he's, you know, adding more, uh, you know, more ammo to his argument. Like he wants to be the one to win this date. And I think that he probably thought that was like a fucking move and it was, but our girl charity, she sees through these things. You know what I mean? To me, it's just Sean wanting to win. I don't think there's any genuine connection and like, I think on charity's end, maybe there was, but Mm -hmm. with Sean, I think it's all about being like the winner. Like it's not because he also one thing that was driving me fucking nuts was that he kept referring to her as this girl. He wouldn't call her charity in all of his testimonials. He'd be like, I mean, like this girl. And I'm like, why does he keep saying this girl? Why isn't he calling her by her name? It it was sort of freaking me out because I've shown this girl every like as if, you know, she's a stranger. I mean, kind of technically they are strangers, but. You, you get what I'm saying? Like, it right. Was like just, he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to personify her or something. Like he's like, just, again, her name, it doesn't just matter who she charity, is. Wants like, to, right. Doesn't matter who name. she is, just wants to win. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like he was like this, this bachelorette. Yeah. 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 Like I've, I've done all my moves on this bachelorette. Why is he <laughs> yeah. calling for it? It's like, yeah, it's I don't like, know. Cause she's a real person and right. she's the bullshit probably. Mm-hmm. My dogs are barking out of control. If you guys want to c- continue the conversation about oh. Sean, okay, I can. <laughs> no, I can keep going. I just yeah. feel like he just has this, like you said, he almost doesn't want to make it personal because hundred percent, yeah. Well, I'm sure it makes the it will make the rejection sting less if it's less personal. I think mm-hmm. it's, it's more him. of a, again, a game to him 100%. rather than like. I really like this person. I forgot who said it to one of the guys. I think this was after the two on one It was mm-hmm. maybe when they were getting another group date. And one of the guys says like, Sean just like, really? He really likes charity. And I was like, does are he? they not reading through this? Like, no, he does not. He just wants to beat you guys. Mm-hmm. I do, do you think, think he, it- do you think he just was like saying, because I almost like got confused as it was going later in. And the more he talked about it, like he kept saying, I feel like, She's I could see us getting married. I could see a wedding. I could see her being the mother of my kids. Like kind of crazy to say that stuff if you don't mean it. True, true. But at, at yes. the same time, it's like, you you know, you say what you got to say. But I also I wonder if he if, you know, he fell victim. He drank the juice. You know what I mean? Like he he knows what he has to say. He knows how he has to do, you know, all this stuff. And I think that he. Uh, ultimately, yes, is just like wanting to win. And I think too, it maybe was a little bit of uh, of an ego bruise for him. Like why, why isn't, I'm, I'm pulling out all my usual moves. Like I said, why isn't she falling all over me? And why is everybody else like also getting attention? Like I, I feel like I've done everything I needed to do to secure her attention and her love and she's not accepting it. And I think that like, I mean, that happens all the time. Like you like somebody a lot and you think that you're giving them everything and they're just like not giving it back and you get frustrated. Like, what the fuck? Like I I've done everything. What the hell? But then sometimes at that point it turns into like, all right, well, you know, am I, am I giving everything or is this just, you know, are we not on the same page? Like, 
is just because I'm giving what I'm giving doesn't mean that it necessarily has to be accepted, you know? Yeah, I I think that was another part of it where when Sean eventually sat down with Charity and was sent home, she was saying, like, I just don't think that we can get there. And he was like, but I feel it, though. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> right. It's like, sorry. Like, like, I don't, like, I that killed day. me. Like, I think he kept he went walked in to talk to Charity thinking that he was like going to make a lot of good points. And she was like going to give him a ro- I feel like he thought he was going to come in there and it was going to go so well because he came in like with that vibe of like, I just want more. Like, I just want more time with you. Like, that's how much I like you. And yeah. and she was just kind of like, yeah, I mean, I'm just further along in this process with other guys. And and I feel like then he started to backtrack so hard. Like, yeah, he's like, no, no, no I, like, but don't you feel like if we just had that one on one time, then we could get there? And she's like, no, no, <laughs> I don't think so. No. Honestly, props to charity, though, because it must be hard to be in a situation. And even I feel like, Kelly, you were referring to like situations in real life when mm-hmm. somebody is like professing their love for you. And oh, but I feel this and I feel that. And sometimes people feel bad being like, mm, I don't feel that way. And, right. you know, like at least charity was like, listen, like. I just don't think we're going to get there. Yeah. And instead of keeping him around and stringing him along, she was like, it's just, it's just not going to work. I will say though, it is crazy that some people didn't get a, a one-on-one and some people got multiple one-on-ones. Like I, yeah. I understand it's probably, you know, behind the scenes charities. Like I want more time with this person and whatever. Yeah. I do understand the feeling of being like, this is a little unfair. This person's getting now multiple one-on-ones and we haven't even had the shot to get yeah. a one-on-one. But when uh-huh. you know, you know, yeah, in that yeah. situation, I feel like, and I think that's what's happening with Charity. She's like, all right, I know it's yeah. not going to work with this one. The only person that I felt bad for in that situation was Tanner, because when they did have their breakup and she sent him home, that one really did feel like a time thing. Like that one really felt like maybe with a little bit more time, that could have turned into something really great. I feel like with Sean, she probably just low key knew that it just was not going to work between them. Mm -hmm. But with Tanner, I felt like, you know, they just didn't really have those, those moments. But then again, she clearly knows. I kind of like the move of like, Hey, I'm giving these two guys second one-on-one dates because I feel like we have a better connection yeah. One of my, and then of course, like they did that. They did the two on one. She didn't give out a rose. And then they did another uh, uh, group date as well as Dotton getting a second one on one. So her date with Dotton, I think, also went extremely well. Mm-hmm. Um, they're kind of in that, it feels like they're in that too good to be true vibe. Like they have that conversation where he was like, you know, my, my heart is telling me that yes, like go for it. Like my head saying like I, it, fairy tales aren't real like this. Like, could it really work? Um, yeah. So I feel like they haven't had any bumps in the road yet, mm-hmm. which may be an issue. I also think that uh, one, like one last thing about Sean going in and talking to her. I think that I, I didn't hate that move. Normally I don't like it when the guys come in and they like try to say their piece and whatever. But I did kind of think like when he walked in and he was like, listen, what just happened there? Like I, I left it all on the table, whatever, or so I thought, but it made me yeah. realize that there was a lot of things that I wanted to say that were left unsaid. I think he started that off. Right. Like I, it, it could have maybe, I, I kind of feel like it maybe could have gone a different way if he was a little more receptive to what she was saying or like, I don't know, maybe just a little less pressure. It felt like pressure, like I, him going there and him saying all that stuff and her kind of being like, oh, I don't know. And then him kind of pushing the issue of it, I think then in turn puts pressure on her to like make these kind of decisions where, like you said, she has yeah. all these other things lined up. She's doing another group date. She's doing another one-on-one. She clearly knows what she's doing. And I think that these wrinkles in the plan are, are she's overcoming them well. But I just think at the end of the day, yeah, I mean, the date, the date with Joey and then the date with Dutton, I don't think Sean could have like compared to either of those. Like they were just so far beyond uh, um, connection. You know what I mean? Like the the day with Dutton where they go and they're, you know, they do the run, they're walking around, they're wearing silly outfits. She said multiple times, like, you're such a trooper. I can't believe you're doing all this for me. Like you put the tutu on, no problem. Like it was just a really, really good time between the two of them. It was an opportunity for 
them to encourage each other while they were in the middle of something. They said at one point, like Charity was like, yeah, if I was struggling, he would like lift me up. And if he was struggling, I would lift him up. Like that to me was a huge deal because that shows me that like, you can, you know, on the lowest level possible, you can face adversity and, and get through it together. You know what I mean? Like it's all at the end of the day, it's all about a partnership. And I think that it needs to be, there, there needs to be two sides of it. It can't just be one side like Sean's rolling with. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. He, he pushed it, which was fair. Yeah. Cause I do feel like, you know, multiple times where charity's like, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Can be mm-hmm. tough mm-hmm. for like, you know, you don't, you don't know how that's, you just like really want that rose. So he pushed it and, you know, kind of backfired. But at the end of the day, I think he was going to be sent home anyway. So she had another, she had another really good date with um, Dine. And then she did a group date to end it with Aaron and Xavier and Tanner, because at that point, Sean was gone. Mm -hmm. Aaron Sneaky was like my favorite part of this episode for just funny sound bites of this guy was just dying to get a date in New Orleans. Like he's like, yeah. this is my city. This is the city that made me a man. Like the whole thing. Like I almost, I, I was actually laughing so hard when Don came back from the date and he was like, yeah, we like uh, ran in this marathon, like in this race thing. And Aaron was like, oh, the fucking sun. Like he was like, the sun fast race, like like whatever the <laughs> hell the name of the race was. Like yeah. he was like, oh, like knew exactly what the race was because he's a big New Orleans guy. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. So it was just like, they really hammered home that this guy was dying for a fucking New Orleans date. Then they didn't didn't give him, didn't give him one. They just had, a, had another group date, which obviously- Still went well for him. Um, and Charity has mentioned multiple times that she is can be indecisive. Mm-hmm. And now it feels like that is coming into play as we come down to the end a little bit. She obviously is still making decisions, but the way she is delaying rose ceremonies and giving herself more time, not a bad thing. Like she's definitely thoroughly thinking about it, which is good. But you can tell there's times when I think flip of a coin she could be going either way or flip of a coin. Like she could give the rose out in the moment or not like Aaron getting that rose and then being like, sorry guys, I need more time to decide between Tanner and, and Xavier, which like that is the sentiment behind that is nice. But at the end of the day, like you're not going to hometowns with Tanner. We all know that you haven't had a single moment of alone time with this man. You're not going to meet his family. Just like rip the bandaid. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, I, I feel, I feel the writings on the wall with all these men. Like we, we could, we could have probably at the beginning of the episode predicted how it was going to go. Generally speaking, especially like I said, after those one-on-one dates were just so, so good. I, um, I wasn't uh, surprised that Aaron got a rose, but I do think that it was a little, um, uh, or no, I- I'm not surprised that he wasn't given a date in New Orleans if he was eventually going to get a rose. Cause they, I mean, they're going to come back. Yeah. Like they're now they're just going to come back there and do it. Wait, well, I don't think his family is from there. I think he just lived oh. in New Orleans. He said he lived in New Orleans for seven years. That's where he became, uh, a, that city made him a man. I see, I see. Oh, right. Okay, I missed that part. I missed that part. Yes. Yeah, I think, okay, so then whatever. I just think that, um, I think that that happens a lot where maybe, yes, the producers know, like, what what are these people's strengths and whatever, but you don't always get your strength. Like, you're not even always going to be served something up on a silver platter. Like, I do think that, like, that would be a major advantage. Like if he had a date in New Orleans, we could like show her the town. It's maybe it's not hometowns exactly, but if he feels so strongly about it, it's just kind of a leg up. And I feel like keeping it separate and having the other people be thrown into something they're unfamiliar with kind of puts them on more even ground with charity and just kind of, you know, it's it's just a little less of a, a less of a perk, I guess. Yeah. I mean, Dotton, Joey, Xavier, Aaron, as our hometowns, I think we all thought that that was going to be how it went, even from the beginning. I don't, yeah. I feel like if we go back and listen to the first cutting stems, I think we picked all of those guys. I think um, so too. Xavier for me, I don't remember Xavier like sticking out for me, but I, but maybe I, I yeah. just haven't. Uh, After haven't. they had their date, I think they had their first one-on-one date and it was kind of like, 
very, yeah. very transparent. So yeah. we have those big moments coming up for hometowns. And then of course the end credit scene rolled Trent put on his acting pants and put on, put on a show, put on a show. He, it's he incredible. nailed it. He nailed it. I cried. <laughs> I was so happy for him. It was great. It was amazing. I said it was almost, it was almost better than him actually pulling luggage because this was like a full sketch. Like it was just so funny to see him like tie on his sneakers and putting on yeah. it, like the way he like put on his glasses. <laughs> and honestly, you know, we give Jesse Palmer Giving a lot up. of flack. We always are kind of, you know, give it busting Jesse Palmer's balls a little bit. But he, that was also very funny, him on the phone. You know, it's like, Trent, do not, I repeat, yes. do not pull luggage. Like, it's just very funny. Great idea. Well executed. It was yep. a perfect way to include Trent um, without uh, having a luggage pull. Thank God. God forbid he went on and filmed again and they didn't show him. We would have freaked out. We would have had a major problem. So I, the way they did this was good. Agreed. I'm glad they actually used it because yeah. if they didn't, I was going to have to have a strong word with ABC. Yeah. Because yeah. we knew Trent did this and we were like, if they cut it again, we're going to have a problem. <laughs> but they didn't. And it was great. I love yes. that. He, I love that they keep flying him around for this. And then he's still not pulling any luggage. Like I just, <laughs> like, just keep, keep bringing him out. Like regardless of, yes, let's see the clips. I want to see all of it, but I do love the idea of Trent, like traveling around, like waiting to pull this luggage. And then it just not happening. He's going to start getting, uh, you know, getting antsy. Like he's, he's an addict. He needs a, he needs a luggage pull. He, how- I know it, it, the buildup is crazy now I where know. like they have to keep having him until he actually pulls somebody's luggage. I we're, know. We're, going, we're two times now that he's never that he hasn't actually pulled anybody's. That's luggage. what I'm saying. He's got to get his fix. How how is it? He's suiting up. How many times is he going to suit up? And you yeah. don't you don't ask you don't ask Batman and Superman to suit up and then have them not save the world. You can't have Trent put it all on glasses, everything, and then you know take it away from him. I know. We're it's just so just means they're going to have to keep having him back. But I'm very glad that there was that that final moment. It was it was great. Hopefully we can get some. Some more details from Trent, maybe maybe next week. I don't, the guy is busy. I don't know what to say, but he was, like Rhea said, he was ready. He was ready to go. Um, mm-hmm. And honestly, it would have almost been too perfect. Like the script, it would have almost seemed fake and yeah. pre-planned if Trent went there and pulled Sean's luggage. Yeah. Like, in the, like the Barcelona world would have been like this this is planned. Like yeah, this right. is, they charity had to save Sean until this moment. So Trent could pull his luggage. Like uh-huh. it almost would have been too predictable. Yes. Yeah. I it would have, uh, it would have been what a, like what a full circle moment. I think that like, I don't know. I think every group chat that's ever existed, would have would have exploded. Like it just, you know what I mean? Like it was, you're right. It was too perfect. It would have been so fucking funny. I'm curious to know, you know, I'm, I'm excited for Sean to see our thoughts. I'm excited to see if he replies to my stories about it. <laughs> Get an <laughs> official statement. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. I bet you Sean would have rather had his luggage pulled by Trent than just oh, to definitely. be sent home <laughs> that way. Right. Maybe you would feel it would feel nostalgic for him. He'd be like, well, if it's gonna be anybody, at least it's Trent. <laughs> exactly. I bet he's actually probably mad that it wasn't that it wasn't him. Um mm-hmm. so that was that was very interesting and a great, great little moment for Trent there. Thank God executed that little that little bit perfectly. It's a perfect bit as we yep. like to call it. Perfect bit. Excellent bit. Excellent Um, bit. Okay, let's cut some stems. Let's give out some roses. You want to go first, Cal? Oh, um, hmm, yes, I'll go first. Okay, so I'm going to give my rose to, uh, you know what? I'm going to give my rose this week to Charity. I don't think I've given her a rose yet. I think that she she's like really handling everything well. Like normally I'm I, at this point in the game, I'm pissed off by the lead. I think that they're making mistakes. I think they're being brainwashed. I think whatever. I think charity has continuously um, done everything with grace and really just trying to, it's, it's clear that she's in it for the right reasons. You know what I mean? And I feel yeah. like the leads always are, but there comes a point where it starts to be like, all right, let's, you know, put your, like I said, put your head on, let's do this right. But I think that she's, uh, she's doing the best she can and she's doing it well. She's, 
people aren't really leaving angry. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, maybe Sean's a little hurt, upset, like I said, bruised ego, but really nobody's kicking and screaming. Everybody's heels, you know, yeah. I guess even Tan- like clothes. even Tanner is so nice when he was leaving. Totally. Too, and like, that was sad. Like that made yeah. me sad. I-, I was sad to see him go. Like usually yeah. at this point, like I said, I'm, there are people that are leaving. I'm like, oh, good fucking riddance. Like goodbye. <laughs> you're the worst. Like get out. But we really haven't, haven't had that happen so far. So I'm, I'm happy to see that. Um, the stem I'm going to cut is, uh, you know, it's hard because I, I really wasn't pissed off by anybody on this, on this time, even when, even when Sean was going off being like, I gave it my all and it's not enough. Like, again, that's normally something that I'd be like, all right, well, relax. It's, you know, you're one of however many men. So blah, blah, blah. But I think, you know, I'll cut the stem of the, of the run, not because I didn't think it was a cute date, but because if you told me that I had to show up and run some kind of marathon, you know, I think that I would have to quit. I, it doesn't yeah. matter. Like, unless I can, unless I can fast walk the entire time that, you know, forget it. It's just not a, uh, it's not happening for me. That's just not something I would like. So I got to cut the stem of that date. Agreed. Super fair. Yeah. Mm, I'm kind of torn up over here. Um, originally I was going to give my rose to Joey while I was watching it, oh, but yeah, that was before we knew Trent was at the end. Because by the way, we didn't know Trent was going to be in this episode. We knew he yeah. did this. We just didn't know what episode it was going to be. Yeah. So I'm going to give my rose to Trent's scene, but I'm also going to cut the stem of him not being able to pull luggage. Fair, because I fair. did love the scene, but we're getting no luggage pulls. That's balance. So now That's he's just balance. becoming an actor instead of the luggage guy. Right. Which right. we love. But it is not. Which I'm happy for. That's not. That's that's. And I was not, so you know, happy that's for him. That's not what we're here for, though. But right. like, the man's getting blue balled left and right. Exactly. Right. You can't. You can't call yourself the luggage guy when every time you show up, there's a, there's no a, luggage. No luggage pull. Now there's been there's been more non pulls than pulls, which yep. is not good. Mm-hmm. Not yep. good. Mm-hmm. Not good for his stats. Nope. Yeah. Um. That's very fair. Well, yep. then I will give my rose to Joey. I think that's we could split that because I mm-hmm. thought. Their date was fantastic. Um, I feel like the chemistry between them is great. And I am happy about that. I'm a little, a little worried. I don't know if we're being thrown off or not. I was a little worried in the preview with Joey's dad being like, do you think you're getting the the real Joey? Like the genuine version, like the real Joey. And I was like, damn, like, is his dad trying <laughs> to say he's fucking going on the show for <laughs> That's not what I mean. Like, reasons. Is, he, is he saying he's fake? Like, is, yeah, is like, if no. Joey is fake? I'm going to be devastated. <laughs> I think that was just the editing. Like, I think the dad was just making sure Joey was being his, himself. Yeah. That's what I, 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 I think so too. Oh, is, I is hope my so. Joey being himself on the show. Yeah. You know, or is he yeah. afraid? Yeah. Yeah. I, I hope so as well. That would, that would be devastating, a devastating blow. Um, And then I'm going to, I'm going to cut this stem of, I mean, I, I I'm just gonna cut the stem of Aaron. I'm the, the his tood about the New Orleans dates. Just honestly, it was funny. So it's like it could go either way. I could give it a I could give it a rose. I could cu- I could cut it. Yeah. Um, but the one moment, it was truly that one moment when Don came back and said where they were, and he was like, I roll. Like, how do you not know what that <laughs> race is? Like, I'm the king of New Orleans. It was <laughs> yeah, it's like it, chill. <laughs> yeah, like it was like calm down. All right. Like you're gonna yeah, yeah. you'll get you'll get your time. Um, so that that was it for me. But all in all, I thought this was a great episode, start to finish. Like I was very invested in this episode from Joey's date all the way, you know, to Trent at the end. Really kept us captivated and ready for hometowns. Uh, do either of you have any hometown? predictions do you which ones do you think are going to go well I don't really have many predictions I this is the most I've been um interested in an episode so far so mm-hmm. it's all it's up to here for me <laughs> yeah I don't know if I have any predictions either I I think that I am not quite sure what's going to happen I think usually we can predict usually we can put all these guys in a box and we know what's going to happen and whatever but I do think that that charity is adding an element of surprise that I didn't realize I was missing I will say that th- as a whole this season I've really enjoyed I think that it's uh it's making us think it's making us like 
we're, we're distracted from like the usual bullshit drama. What's his face in the beginning is gone. What's his name? I forget already with the earrings. Brayden. Brayden. Yeah. Like he was the only, he was annoying, whatever, but like we got that little bit of drama out of the way, but I, I'm always somebody who loves the, the love aspect of the bachelorette or the bachelor. Yeah. Like I think that it's, it's a very genuine season so far. So whatever we have in hometowns, I can't imagine is going to change my opinion so much on any of these people, but families always add an element of surprise. Like if, if your family sucks, we, we're going to see it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and that's, and there's always a, there's always one, there's always one family that's like not great. So, or yeah. a family that like likes to be on TV too much or, you know what I mean? Like that can still happen. But that apart from that, I feel like all these guys, they're great. So the families they come from must be great, too. Yeah, I think they're all going to my prediction is that it's all going to go like too well. And Charity is going to have um, issues picking somebody because it felt like with the previews, a lot of it was her really freaking out about sending the wrong person home. So yeah. I feel like maybe yeah. there could be a surprise at the end of this where somebody who we thought had a really good hometown ends up getting sent home. So, yep. Okay, guys, that wraps it up for Cutting Stems. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks all to all of you for watching. And we will be back for Hometowns next week. I absolutely love using Instacart. I use Instacart every single week. Actually, this past weekend at the Jersey Shore, Instacart was a huge lifesaver. I got all of our groceries delivered from Instacart right to the house that we were staying in. I cooked up some ribs. We had a little barbecue and everything was made easy with Instacart. If you're spending the day at the pool, the beach or the lake through Instacart, you can make sure you have everything you need for the whole family from SPF and pool floats to fresh fruit and snacks delivered in as little as one hour. I can't tell you enough about how much of a lifesaver Instacart was for us this weekend because we had a great parking parking spot. We didn't want to move our car to have to go to the grocery store. So we were like, why don't we just use Instacart and get everything delivered right to our door, which we did. And let me tell you, it is a huge lifesaver. I'm using Instacart weekly at this point. I really think it's the best. With delivery via Instacart, I can easily order my groceries and other summer, summer essentials. Instacart helps to deliver the order right to my door in as fast as one hour, giving me time back to enjoy every day of summer. Just order online or via the easy to use app. I use the app personally. When you're hosting or need large orders, you can stock up and save your summer favorite brands. With delivery via Instacart, you have access to get items delivered from over 1,200 stores in 80,000 locations across the country. Instacart shoppers shop for you like you would shop for you. Instacart shoppers provide support while they shop, share real-time updates, and deliver your order with care. Instacart, add summer to your cart. Visit instacart.com slash chicks to get $30 off your first order of $80 or more and also get free delivery on your first three orders. Minimum $10 per order for free delivery. Offers valid for a limited time. Additional terms do apply. You must be 21 or over for alcohol delivery where available if that is what you go with. But once again, visit instacart.com slash chicks to get $30 off your first order of $80 or more and also get free delivery on your first three orders. Minimum $10 per order for free delivery offers valid for a limited time. Additional terms do apply. All right, everyone, we are here with a very, very special guest, one of our favorites, Maura Higgins, the newest social ambassador for Love Island USA on Peacock, and obviously one of our favorite reality TV show stars of all time. Thank you for joining us, Maura. Oh, hi. Thanks for having me. We're super excited. Like Rhea said, I this was... When, when when this was offered, it was like, could not have said yes fast enough. We <laughs> love Love Island. We love UK. We love USA. We um, I'm, I clock a lot of Love Island hours. I also watch Australia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all across the board. So I'm spending a lot of my days watching Love Island. But having I mean, it's to jump into TV, it, isn't it? It is. It's the easiest yeah. TV to watch. Yeah. Having you jump onto the Love Island USA side is really cool for us because... I think it also now introduces you to a whole new group of people also who may not have watched the UK version, who don't watch it, and yeah. now they get to see you do this. So what was that um, initial connection like? How did you get involved with doing USA? Do you know what? The conversation started a few months back, um, and we had like a lot of conversations, and they were exciting conversations, and we spoke about a lot of things. And... You know what? I just, I really get on with the whole team. I really love the USA. Like, 
you know, I've always wanted to do something in America. Um, and Love Island just fits for me, doesn't it? Like, you know, I've done the show. I can relate to every single contestant. Um, so I think this role for me is like, it's just, it just suits, you know? Um, and like being, being, do you know what? Being back in the villa, it was so surreal. Like it was crazy because I had never stepped foot back into a villa since I did, I did the show, which was like four years ago. So that was pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, and to just like, you know, I'm going to be interviewing the, uh, the exit Islanders. And like, it's nice because we have that bond. Like, you know, we understand each other. Every single person that has done Love Island understand each other because like, you know, to outside viewers, they see something, but like when you're in there, it's a completely different experience. It's like so intense, like emotions are so high. So I think it's nice for, you know, when these Islanders leave the villa that they have that bit of comfort, you know? Yeah, I think like you said, this is the perfect role for you as people who love Love Island. Like we said, it's a perfect fit. And we also love Love Island US. I think everyone was very excited when it came to the US. I think people are loving it on Peacock. And, you know, we're only a couple episodes in, but we're very excited to watch it unfold. You mentioned that this was the first time that you were stepping foot back into a villa. We did hear yeah. rumors a couple months ago where people are like, oh, my God, there's going to be a Love Island all-star where it's us it's uk it's australia all these people in it together would you yeah. ever go back into the villa as a contestant now that you are in this sort of hosting role you know you kind of have a little bit of power to you would you step back into the contestant role i definitely wouldn't um <laughs> i was asked to do the uk version of like an all-stars and I didn't even have to think about it. It was just a straight up no. It's not for me. I had my time. And it's just like, I just can't see myself ever going back. You know, I rather like go into more like presenting side of things, like the host and side of things. And yeah, I just, I like to do something that I've never done before. Mm -hmm. I like a bit of a challenge. So yeah, just not for me. Right. <laughs> and I feel like you had such an iconic run on that season. Whenever somebody asks, which season of Love Island do I start? I think people say season five automatically. That's the go to. And you almost yeah. want to like leave as a loved character. Because if you go mm -hmm. back on, who knows what's to happen? <laughs> you just don't know. Like, <laughs> going into a show like that, you don't know what to expect. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going on in the outside world. You know, we don't we don't get told anything. So you really don't know what people's perception of perception of you is like. Yeah. And do you know what as well? Like I'm older now, like I'm 32. I turned 33 the end of the year. It's like I'm a bit long in the tooth to be going back into a day and show, you know. <laughs> I don't well, I think, think we would agree with that, but yes. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. It, it's as a viewer, it's sad, but also yeah. completely understandable at the same time. And the presenter host role is, I think, such a good spot for you. Like you, yeah. you just have the best voice. Like you have the mm -hmm. everybody loves your oh. accent. Like, I think I don't know why, especially like Americans, like it's just we just I can listen to you talk all the time. So I love it. I think it's I think it's great. So seeing you do all these interviews and everything. Um, for now, for now, U.S. is really cool. And you're in Fiji, which is oh. insane. I mean, what a dream job, really. Like, I'm in the most beautiful place. Like, and, you know, working on Love Island, like, it just, because I know so much about the show, I've experienced it. It doesn't really feel like work because I'm enjoying it so much. Like, it's crazy. It's just like the dream for me. Yeah. And you get to wake up in Fiji. It's beautiful there. And you mentioned I wake how up, I open my back doors. I can hear the birds singing. I'm like, oh, my God, this is my life. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to want to go home after. No, probably um, not. <laughs> you mentioned how when you're in the villa, you don't know anything that's happening on the outside. And we've talked to other contestants before where we're like, you can't listen to music, you can't watch TV. Are any of the contestants on USA trying to get any information out of you? Like if they if they um, catch you or they're like, hey, tell me, tell me this. 
You know what? I've not experienced it, um, but I know Ariana was in the other day and she did tell me that they were trying to get some information from her. So, yeah, I don't think she gave away anything, but I think they were like asking like, oh, my God, what episode are we on? And, you know, just trying to get little bits of information. Mm -hmm. But like I can relate to that because when I was in the show and, you know, anyone came in or out, like the host, anything, we were always trying to get information or a new bombshell comes in. We'd always be asking questions. What's going on outside? Like we wanted to know everything because you know you're you're in there for so long and you don't you don't get called anything you don't know what's going on, on the outside yeah so that, is, try your luck. <laughs> that is insane to just wake up every single day and in a beautiful place but at some point yeah. you got to go a little crazy being like i have no idea what day it is <laughs> no like i found it quite nice like i know a lot of people struggle without their phones and stuff but I'm not really a girl like I you know what when I meet people they're always very shocked by me that I'm not one of these girls to sit there on my phone like flicking through Instagram like everyone mentions it to me all the people I meet they're like I'm really shocked by you I thought like you'd be like hands on hand, phone on your hand 24 7 scrolling 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 and I'm like absolutely not that is not me I'm never on my phone I prefer to like be present um so I actually didn't mind being away from my phone. Like, but I, I remember there was quite a few of them like, oh my God, I just miss my phone. I just want to go on social media, like blah, blah, blah. But it didn't bother me. I actually liked to not have my phone. Sometimes that's really nice to just like get away from that because you remember when you were a kid and you didn't have a phone and you just lived life and you were present yeah. every moment. Yeah, it's so nice. Like... I mean, I think we all should probably take a break from our phone now and again. Mm -hmm. It's good for the mind. You Absolutely. Know? It, it definitely, it definitely is. So we have seen the teaser for Ariana that's been posted on all the USA social and whatnot. So we're super excited to see that. But I'd love to know like what you know about her. Uh, you know what? Um, I'm going to be completely honest. I have never watched the show yeah and i never even heard of it but then when i was speaking to some of my friends that seen a little clip um that love island posted of me and ariana they were like oh my god you met ariana and they were like screaming and i was like yeah i literally interviewed her yesterday and they were like what no <laughs> You, I need to know about this show and I really need to watch um I was told I need to watch the, this reunion where she mm -hmm. went off. you have like, to so I was told obviously about the situation that went down and yeah. I just can't believe it what a strong woman and to go through that I can't even imagine mm -hmm. um but I heard it's great tv and that's my kind of tv so I really need to catch up on that listen if and you, you know what I met her and she is super super nice super super humble like I could sense how humble she was mm -hmm. um and yeah we just clicked straight away I told her oh next time I'm in America we're meeting up <laughs> and um yeah that definitely has to happen she's a lovely sweet girl and we love to hear that that's an amazing crossover <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I know there was people on Instagram like going wild about it. Oh my God, Maura and Ariana together. This is wild. And I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's it's two of people's favorites. And and like you're saying, if that's the kind of TV you like, then Vanderpump Rules is perfect for you. Yeah, yeah there was people putting up. I seen a few things on Instagram last night and it was like petition to get Maura on Vanderpump. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, I don't even know what the show is. But OK. <laughs> Yeah, I th feel like that's just too, it's especially for the us Americans that watch Love Island UK, it's like two separate universes of like the Bravo TV and like the Love Island universe. And there's just never yeah. been o any overlap. And like this is uh, yeah. bringing in all that overlap, which is is great. And it's, you know, that's why yeah, I think so everybody's good. so excited. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like it's great that Love Island USA are bringing people in. Like I feel like they're really changing things up. And again, as you said, like the show hasn't been on that long. It's only it's only been on a, a, a fair few days. Yeah. And like there's so much happening. Like there's so much happening on week one. It's like, oh, my God, I, I can't even keep up. It's like, you know, bombshells, dumpings. It's like it's all happening. And, um, you know, everything that happened with Bergie. 
you know, like he was dumped and I was literally nearly crying because I am so rooting for Bergie. I absolutely love him. And then him getting that message and then sent off to the to the hideaway with two sexy bombshells. No. I was like, I really <laughs> love to see it. Like, I know, I'm, I'm so rooting for him. And if he doesn't find love in the Love Island Villa, I am going to hunt for a woman <laughs> just for Bergie. I'm going to do it. Uh, I mean, he, he would be so, he would be so, so happy because he just, oh I mean, any, this, any sense of any of the girls liking him, it feels like he kind of freaks, you know, freaks out a little bit. But there's been, I've seen some people on social talking about kind of like the differences because it's, it's different, you know, different cultures. And it feels like a lot of times the USA cast jumps head first in, right? Like, I think it was either episode three or four. I forget which couple. It might have been KK. I'm not sure. But somebody, like they were talking about, oh, are you closed off yet? And I think all the viewers were like, oh, my, what are we doing? It's day was three. It, like, relax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it Keenan and KK or something? I think, I think it might have been them where they were like, and I just feel like, you know, sometimes you the UK people kind of are more open to it. But everybody wants to be really coupled up fast, it seems like, this season. Yeah. Do you know what? It is It is really crazy, though, when you're in there. Like, emotions are so high. I can't even stress that enough. Like, emotions are so, so high. And, like, honestly, one day in there feels like a week. Like, it, it, it just, it's crazy different. And it's like, even me as a viewer, like, sometimes I'm watching it, you know, and someone gets upset and it might look like a petty thing to cry over. I, you know, as a viewer, I can watch it and go, oh my God, what are you crying for? Come on, like, pull yourself together. But then I have to think, okay, I was in there and I know that like, like there's obviously a lot more happening. Like we get to see an like an hour or an hour and a half of 24 hours in a day. So like, there's a lot we don't see. And when emotions are that high, like, you know, every little tiny thing can really get in on you. Mm -hmm. That makes a ton of sense. And what was it like for you watching after you were on the show? Like, what, did you have you to know, look it in in just a different it, light? Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Like, it is crazy. But I can still sit there as a viewer and, like, really enjoy it and, like, scream at the TV. Oh, my God, what are you doing? You need to go crazy at him. Don't let him walk all over you. But then when I really sit there, I'm like, oh, well, you know what? There's probably lots more happening. But like, I do like to just watch it as a viewer, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And not think of everything else that goes on. Of course. Yeah, you have to still, because it keeps that, yeah. mm -hmm. you have to keep the magic of the show a little. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course, yeah. Right. And yeah. you know, like, I think there's a lot of people out there that think Love Island is scripted. Like, I, I always see it online and I'm like, oh my God, where are they getting this from? Like, Love Island is not scripted. If Love Island was scripted, all of these contestants must be really good actors and actresses because <laughs> how? Like, it's it's not. Like, everything is so real. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, challenges and stuff, like, you know, there is, like, a help in hand to, like, make sure things run smoothly with stuff like that. But it is real. It, it couldn't be more real. Right. Uh, I, I think Love Island is, like you know you watch reality shows all the time and you're like all right that was planted I've never thought that about Love Island like I feel like Love Island is as real as it gets because you just it remind is. yourself all the time that they're being taped 24 7 every single day yeah 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 I feel like there's times when you can feel like okay you know this person gets to come back or like this, you know, this were, we're, we're so like behind the scenes, people know who makes good TV, but then they make the good TV themselves. Like it's up to them to be put back in front of the it's camera. Them what they do. Nobody's going to force you to do anything you don't want to do. Nobody's yeah. going to force you to kiss a guy you don't want to kiss, speak to someone you don't want to speak to. Like it's, it, it couldn't be more real. Like you do what you want in there, you know? Yeah. yeah we just saw the first, um, kind of like big dumping that happens for for the for the show and sadly with Jasmine went home which was which was sad because I I really liked her and I wish she got more of a chance Guys, oh. I'm being deadly serious I really thought that Harrison was going to pick destiny so, I, so did I I was confused like I literally was like oh my god okay like in my head I was thinking oh destiny's gone like I was shocked I couldn't believe it I know they're both, you know, they're both stunning, but it, I feel like we saw more of his conversation with Jasmine and that they maybe had more chemistry. I don't know. I think Harrison got a little scared I, I, because everybody 
was talking about her. Like, I don't know how she got the crazy girl. Like, I don't know how that even happened, but all of a sudden they were all talking about her. Like she was a crazy girl. And it was like, why did they just decide? I don't get where this label came from. Absolutely nothing wrong with, you know, a crazy girl, a crazy personality. <laughs> I actually think it's amazing because do you know what? The guy is never going to get bored. Mm-hmm. That's the way I look at it. So, you true. know, and I met her, you know, and we had a little chat before our interview and our interview was so nice. And honestly, like she was such a sweet girl, like so, so sweet. Like I'm actually sad to see her go. Yeah. And it was one of the first times we've also seen like, of course, she didn't make a love connection, but she did make that friendship connection, which I know you talked to her about, too. Yes. Kind of like an underrated part of Love Island. It's like, yes, you are. You love is in so many forms and you leave with some really great friends. And it really only seemed like a week and that she had made such a good friend in Anna. And Anna was so upset about her leaving. Oh, she was. I really love Anna. Her facial expressions are the best, <laughs> the absolute best. Um, I definitely would get on with her if I was in there. Um, so I can really understand why her and Jasmine had such a close friendship. Um, and I think a lot of people are going to miss seeing their friendship on screen, you know? Buying fine jewelry is a step most of us will get to sooner or later, whether you're looking to gift a loved one something special. They can use every day like a timeless pair of diamond studs or to pop the question with the ring no one could say no to. But most of us aren't sure where to start with a purchase like that. That's why we want to point you in the direction of BlueNile.com, the original online jeweler. And I want to point you in that direction today because their anniversary sale is going on now. At BlueNile.com, you can find the perfect pair of earrings, necklaces, jewels, so much great jewelry, rings, the, your perfect piece of jewelry for life special moments, or even create that custom engagement ring of her dreams. Their simple online tools let you choose the diamond shape, size, and clarity, as well as the setting style. Blue Nile also offers in-depth educational materials and experts on hand 24-7 via phone or chat. Thanks to Blue Nile's diamond price guarantee, you can make sure you're getting the best deal for your diamond. Rhea and I have earrings we love. I have little di- you know, diamond studs that are perfect, classic, timeless. You can wear them all the time. Um, Rhea's got a pair of diamond hoops that are beautiful. They're great, timeless, timeless pieces of jewelry. So right now you can save up to 40% on fine jewelry and 15% on engagement ring settings when you shop the Blue Nile anniversary sale at Blue Nile n-i-l-e dot com that's blue nile dot com for up to 40 percent off during the blue nile anniversary sale blue nile dot com what's the female friendship like when you get off the show like with the people that you were on the show with how do you kind of maintain those friendships outside of Love Island. You know, I feel like you 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 blossom even more when you come out because you get to do the things you know, like going out for dinners and it it just it's amazing. Like it's one of the best things for me. Like coming out with a real, true, genuine friendship. Like that's all I could have asked for, you know. And it's a friend for life. You literally go into the villa, you spend a few months there, and then you you literally meet some incredible people like that's that's like the best part of it i know you're in there to find love but you know friendships are friendships are so so important yeah and you have a special bond that not everybody can relate to yeah exactly because you know you experience something so intense together you know Mm -hmm. now bringing you back to your season of love island a little bit um What does it feel like, right, when you get to the end and everyone's coupled up and it gets more serious and, Mm -hmm. you know, you do the vows and you do the whole thing? Is there sort of a pressure when the show ends to stay in that couple? Because I feel like as a viewer, you know, people get so attached to these couples. But then you have to remember that they were in a villa separated from the world and then they're thrown into real life and of course we just saw molly may and tommy they're engaged they have a beautiful baby it's such a beautiful love story and then you see the couples that break up within two weeks what what's it like when you get out of the villa and you're like all right now what do we do i feel like there's always this 
this misconception like you know people think oh my god they have to stay together they're just staying together because blah 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 like honestly when you come out of the villa and you, like you're you're in an enclosed space with these people for x amount of months whatever when you come out it is so different like and you know there is relationships there is people in happy couples like from love island mm. but like at the end of the day like not everyone's gonna click and be compatible when you get out to the real world it, it is harder like i know for me anyway i was a bit like when i came out i was like oh like this actually isn't something that i would go for <laughs> if i wasn't in love island like yeah. and you, you come to a bit of a realization mm. and i mean even for me like the guy that i left with I I even broke up with him on a phone call because I was just like, this just isn't it. Like I, didn't even, I didn't even do it to his face. I was just like, yeah, no, not for me. And you know what? I didn't have this like, oh my God, what are what's everyone going to say about it? What's everyone's opinions? Because I mean, lucky for me, I don't really care what people think. So if people had a problem with it, I mean, it's irrelevant mm -hmm. because I need to do what makes me happy. And I think every single person that comes out of love, I needs to think the same. Like, don't think, oh my God, like if I break, if we break up this soon, like is everyone gonna have an opinion on it? Because, you know, people do get very invested in your relationship because they've been watching you together for, you know, X amount of weeks. But it is very different when you come out. It's, it is, it's very, very different. Yeah, I think you have the best attitude about it because I think you're right. You have to do what makes you happy because at the end of the day, if you stay in a couple, whether it's Love Island, real life, whatever, where you're not happy, yeah. you're just going to be miserable. You can't, you can't let all, they're going to be upset for what? A minute when they scroll past on Instagram and see the news exactly. and then they're, it's, it's not their life. Small. Yeah. It's yeah. not their life. They don't have to live with that person. So they're going to forget about it eventually. Yeah. And you know what, as well, when you come out, you know, you're you're so busy as well. And, you know, I feel like if you really want to make it work, you'll make it work with that right person, you know, if you want to. But then if, like, work kind of takes over and, you know, you kind of don't make that time for one another, well, it's clearly not really meant to be anyway. So what's the point in wasting your time and my time? Let's just move along so we can actually find the right person. Yeah. Did you have any um, idea that the Molly, Molly May and Tommy engagement was coming or were you as surprised as the rest of us when they posted their big video? Um, so I got told before she posted, obviously. Yeah. Um, but I mean, we all knew he was going to do it soon. I mean, it was only like a few weeks ago when I was on the phone to them and I was like, Tommy, you need to propose. Where's this ring? And I was just like ranting down the phone at him. <laughs> um, and now it's happened. And honestly, he smashed it out of the park. Like, it looked just so incredible. She just looked so happy. I'm so happy for them. Honestly, they are a match made in, ha in heaven. Like, he's literally the female version of him and vice versa like they're like the same person um and yeah i'm just i'm just so fucking happy for them yeah. i love it we are, we are yeah. too it's, and I, it's so exciting and i think like what, your friendship with molly may was something beautiful that came out of love island as well because you know everyone talks about the beginning and you know it was like oh you had your eyes on tommy and it's i think it's just great to see two women be like all right, it didn't move on. We were on a show and now we just yeah. have this great friendship it, together. It's crazy. Like if we were all on a show now, people would never even bring that up now because mm -hmm. like I look at Tommy like a brother mm -hmm. and he looks at me like a sister. Like there is, you, you just can't even think about it. Even like when you see a comment about it, it's like, ooh, it like, it's like <laughs> right. icky because it's like brother sister relationship right. now. Right. And, and that was such a small thing on the show. Like it was like an episode. <laughs> Yeah, literally. Yeah. It wasn't that deep. No. But I can get that people, you know, like, you know, get very invested and, you know, everyone's entitled to their opinions, but like, you know, we have such a, a good friendship and that's literally all it is. And yeah, I'm just so incredibly happy for them. I love it. And yeah. I can't wait for the big day. 
<laughs> it's gonna be oh i can only imagine it's gonna be it's gonna honestly be it will be the most perfect beautiful <laughs> wedding of all time and i just can't wait yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely will be um the so everyone's tuning into love island usa uk is winding down as well i know your friend leah was on it this season how did you think she did and just because I know like there's only you know, this is like the last week. Is there, is there any couple on UK that this season that you're rooting for that you were watching? Uh, well, I've not actually got to watch it. OK, I watched a bit like I, I I watched a bit of it before I flew out here. Um, But my my work before I flew out was like like quite crammed together. So I was like missing episodes here and there. And I was like getting stressed because I was like, oh my God, like I'm not getting to see Leah. And I was like keeping up on the social media stuff. Guys, honestly, I have no clue what's happening in the UK one. <laughs> like I am so invested in the USA one now that I can't put my focus anywhere else. Like my yeah. focus is I will that. say it's hard to watch. Um, it's hard to watch at the same time. So it's nice yeah, that it's kind of like we're peeling. Mm. Yeah, yeah. We're peeling into US. And, and I want to know what you thought about Carmen's move to kiss Bergie in that challenge because Victor seems like a man, like, I don't know, at first Victor was really pulling like the, I was, you know, I got sisters raised by women, like, and then this, I don't know, I, I don't like the attitude change he's having. I know, I don't know. Well, maybe we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, I, don't I hope know. so. I mean, I like to think that he's just going to, like, have a bit of a rethink. Maybe he needs to sit by himself for a second. I think his ego is burned, you know? Yeah. But this is what happens. Yeah. This is what happens. Did you think that – Did were you surprised Carmen did that in the challenge? Yeah. Yeah, I was. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Victor's not one that's used to – not getting attention and since none of the girls picked him in the beginning and the first coupling and then this i feel like it's probably piling piling up a little bit uh yeah. for him Maybe i don't like it her. i just don't like it yeah but i mean hopefully hopefully he'll have a reality check yeah <laughs> is there one couple that um you're you're rooting for a little bit more than the rest right now i know it's still very early days it's so early and things change so quickly on love island um i really really like kk and keenan because you know from the beginning they obviously just clicked mm -hmm. i was a bit worried obviously when keenan and cassie were having that little flurry conversation but yeah, I'm I'm rooting for them. It'd be just so nice, like, you know, at the very beginning they just connected and, and like seeing it'd be so nice to see them get to the final and just to see their relationship grow. But then again, it's Love Island and you just don't know what's around the corner. Yeah, definitely. It's it's that's what makes the show so great. And you the bombshells, like Harrison, great bombshell. I'm excited to see um who else they bring in. I do also love that USA sprinkles in different characters, you know, get people from different places. Mm -hmm. He's Australian. You got okay. Victor. Like yeah. you, it, you mix Absolutely. it up a little bit. So which I like. Yeah. I think it's a, I think it's a great, uh, great way to do it. But yeah, the show, I mean, you have gotten so many amazing opportunities post the show. So I love that this is like the direction um, that you're going in and you're not looking back at being a, a contestant on the show, but what has, I think so many people are also so interested after you go on a dating show, and then yeah. everybody in the world is so invested in your dating life. And then you go back to real life and you go back to real life dating and people are still super invested. How do you deal with that? A lot. Like, it's so crazy because I'm more like private with my day and life. And it's crazy because I came from a show where it was obviously on TV and you couldn't really hide from it. But I don't know, like... I suppose that people are still going to get invested and that's absolutely fine. And But I'm more like now, I suppose, because let's be real, I've had some failed relationships in the past. <laughs> We're not going to deny it. Like, I'm, I'm saying it mm -hmm. straight yeah. out. But I think now I'm more like, I think I just keep it for myself until I really feel ready. 
Yeah. You know, I've had relationships in the past where I was pressured into like, you know, announcing it on social media. And I look back now and I'm like, why did I, why did I allow that pressure? Mm -hmm. Like, that's really, my social media is my social media. It's not anyone else's. Like, I should post what I want to post. And it's, it's bizarre that I was even, even doing that because I'm such a strong woman. And I'm like, no, I do me. I don't really care. But um, yeah, I think now I'm definitely, I'm definitely like, I'm going to do it in my own time. Yeah. I think that's the best. I think that's the best way to do it. Because like I said, everybody, it's crazy how you, of course, everybody, like you said, it's been four years since your season, Mm -hmm. but everybody is still locked in and we're locked into everything that you're doing. Love Island USA is such a perfect fit for you. I can't wait to see your sit down with Ariana now. Like if you're talking to her, it's just like, it's just, it's so great. Um, So happy that you're a part of it. And everyone can watch Love Island USA on Peacock Thursdays mm-hmm. to Tuesdays. The new episodes are on at nine o'clock Eastern. Get the app, play along. That's like the most fun part too. I think because, you know, we watch all the other countries and because we're in the US, I like forget that we can interact yeah. and we are yeah. a part of Love Island USA. Yeah. It feels like a game. <laughs> yes. It is. It is. It's so fun. So yeah, everyone needs to tune in. Honestly, it is a really good season and we've only just started agreed i love that the, the drama is already kicking off which is which is great that's always the sign of a good well, season. We love the <laughs> <laughs> exactly so maura thank you so so much for talking to us everyone like i said make sure you're watching love island usa you are the best yes thank you so much we were so excited about this All right, that wraps up today's episode of Chicks in the Office. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you for subscribing so much. We love you guys. Keep subscribing. We want to bleach Noah's hair blonde so, so bad. So make sure you do that. We love you guys, and we will talk to you on Friday.